You know, I've spent pretty much the past afternoon reading this book on this hammock lying down. And, oh gosh, Terry Glandy, you've done it again. You are so extremely good at killing mainstream characters. Hello, full book questers. It is I, Aaron, the book quester. So today I have this epic book, the 13th book, the current finale of Skullduggery Pleasant. Seasons of War by Derek Landy, as usual, and well, let's get right on to it. Hey, remember that parallel universe where Malevolent actually won the war? Well, we're going there again. Why? Because apparently, Me Malevolent wants to invade our world. In other words, we need to stop him from ever entering the portal to come into our world to conquer it all over again. And China Soros, the current Grand Mage, well... She has a plan. She puts together an elite team of warriors. Yacha Metritorius had his dead men, and she needs her own dead men. The only surviving members of the original, original dead men, Skullduggery Pleasant, the skeleton detective, Dexter Vex, the explorer, and Skarkenru, the soldier. And together, they are the three remaining last dead men. What happened? Well, read The Last Stand of the Dead Man. It's one of my favorite Skeletor Pleasant books. Then, of course, one of the newer recruits of the dead men, which is Valkyrie Kane. And, of course, they got a couple new people, named also known as Tanis Lau, a good old friend, and Luke Skywalker. I know, right? But this guy, he's a shunter. He can, like, travel into different dimensions and stuff. He is just really, really annoying. And, you know, she, she chose his name as Luke Skywalker. Oh, God. And even Skulls Real Pleasant says it. I really hope we don't get sued. Typical Derek Landy. And, yeah, so that's an elite team of seven. And together, they go into the Les Benes universe in order to fight and kill Mavalent before they come, he comes into our world. Oh, that's just great. Oh, by the way, you know that Nefarian Serpine character from ages ago? You know how he killed Skeletal Ray's entire family? Well, he's back. He's someone from another world and from the other world and together there. They go into the world to kill Mavalent. Of course, Luke Skywalker doesn't survive because, well, he's a freaking noob when it comes to fighting. That's the first thing. The second thing is that Malevolent's world, it's currently kind of, you know, overrun by a zombie apocalypse. So, Malevolent, so the roads are dangerous. We need to find Malevolent and kill him as soon as possible. And, yeah, it is a pretty well-paced bug, but sometimes... Definitely this time, I think Derek Landy's pushing it because he has so many moving pieces that it's kind of hard to keep track. Another storyline that we're following is the Plague Doctor in Darkwest, who has become pregnant for some reason. And it's just really, really confusing. And there's, of course, the storyline with um, the, the police temp temper fray. And his girlfriend's just like, oh my god, what is happening? I cannot keep track. So that's pretty much it in some ways. And basically, they go into the Les Benes universe, and immediately they lose Luke Skywalker. What did we expect? I'm just repeating myself here to get back into the fold. And then we travel across the continent of Europe towards, well, towards where... Mevolent is, which is in Transylvania. Oh, great. And we travel there, we realize that Mevolent isn't there, and then there we lose, well, we lose Valkyrie because she gets separated from the rest of the dead men, and it's just, wow. And then, of course, the rest of the dead men forge ahead and they attack, they go and scout out the resistance, who are the people who are going against Mevolent in that world. And they find where Mevolent is staying, some, some final sorcerer city with walls. And they go over there, and they get ready to fight, I guess. And of course, Skaldari Pleasant and Tanislav gets her, themselves captured. 
and it's time for Valkyrie to shine. She uses facades, which is like a little shape-shifting thing that kind of, it's like a mask, it's like a magical mask that makes you look identical to someone else. It's pretty cool, isn't it? And she uses it to disguise herself as one of the soldiers that Mevalent knows well, and she releases Skulldegree Pleasant, and then we find out the dreadful truth of the druggers of the zombie apocalypse. Lord Vile was behind it all. And Lord Vile attacks Mevalent, and Skulldegree Pleasant with the God Killer Sword, he has that by the way, he cleaves through monsters and, and sorcerers, evil sorcerers of course, and he stands up to Lord Vile. And he puts on the armor, and Skulldery Pleasant becomes Lord Vile, and the Lord Vile, and Lord Vile fights, and battle reigns. Oh god, that is probably one of the coolest scenes in the entire series. Lord Vile vs. Lord Vile. Epic. And after that epic battle, in which Valkyrie shoots the Scepter of the Ancients and kills the other Lord Vile, we then fight again, which is okay. And of course, Mevelin goes through the portal with his armies. And when on the other side, the armies of Roarhaven and the forces of Mevelin are in battle. And Skullderry Pleasant, Dexter Vest, Vex, and Tanislaw comes through and they start attacking. And this is where I have to break it to you guys. Scar can rule. His power, first of all, was. He could x-ray, he could see through surfaces. Because he was a pervert when he was a teenager, he decided that he wanted the ability to see through layers, including clothes. <sighs> Damn, why Skarkin? Well, he died. I know, he was a mainstream character. He was also a dead man. He's dead. We didn't see him survive. Why? <laughs> Derek Landy. He's... He's just so good at killing mainstream characters. As long as it's not Skullderly Pleasant or Valkyrie Kane, we can be assured that they will die someday in the future. Why? <laughs> Skark and Rue was probably one of my favorite characters alongside with Dexter Vex. I'm a little bit sad. Um, it's just like Rick Riordan killing Jason Grace in the Trials of Apollo. It's just shocking. You didn't know you didn't see it coming. And then we the unnamed the guy, you know, the guy who took over Kaisen's body, the Dark Lord, came here and went against Mevalent. Again. Great. And then it just feels like a rushed conclusion after that. Mevalent and Seraphina gets trapped in the Eternity Gate, which is like a thing that stops time. It's like a time prison thing. And then of course the name is killed by Augur and the prophecy is fulfilled. Wow, like... Is this just me or does, just, does, just, does that just kind of feel rushed? I mean, this unnamed guy, we've been building up to him for the past three bucks. And he's just dead in a very rushed one chapter. It's just not right for me, and... This the, this entire book, well, it's very good, of course. It has all the emotional elements, and the dead men coming together, the Lord Vile fighting scene. It was a little epic, but it just felt like a rushed conclusion to a very grand scheme. It just felt like Derek Landy was tying up some loose ends that he had made before and kind of he didn't kind of want now. It, it felt like he just rushed finished it all for the next bug to start with a completely new villain that he's been planning all along. That's what I kind of got from this book, but also, it was incredibly epic. So, that is my review for this book. One thing I want to comment on is that Skulldegree Pleasant, in my opinion, is kind of like Darth Vader in a lot of ways. He's He used to be one of the good guys, then he got tortured, then he got tricked, and he's just, he became a mass murderer known as Lord Vile, which has all sorts of Darth Vader feelings, he's just like, so powerful and one of the most powerful sorcerers of all time. Then he goes back to good old Skulldery. It's just that he's such a conflicted character and so is Valkyrie now. And that really interests me. And they're both raving crazy sometimes. Another thing I want to comment on. You know like the classic Skulldery Pleasant look with the white thing with like white and black? This time it's black and green. 
I mean, just saying, it looks really, really good. And I think Derek Landry might have started a redemption arc for Serpine. Not too sure about that because usually we get backstabbed, but redemption arc, there's no such thing. So that's pretty much all I have to say for today. And like always, your bookquester, Aaron the bookquester. Sorry, it's just really distracting because we're in a campsite. And it is a good old Skull Pleasant book. And I am waiting for the 14th one.